Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Inside EVs YouTube channel. We're standing here today with a 2021 Tesla Model S Plaid. We're gonna do our 70 mile an hour highway range test. I'm at a supercharger now. I'm gonna supercharge it back up to 100%, get the battery nice and warm to start the range test. Then I'm gonna hop out onto the highway, drive at 70 miles an hour in loops up and down the New Jersey Turnpike to see how far this puppy goes. Now, we have the optional 21 inch arachnid wheels. So this version is EPA range rated at 348 miles per charge. That's the combined EPA range rating. But since this is a highway range test, we depend more on the highway EPA range rating. In that case, it's 341 miles. The highway range rating was very similar to the combined range rating, we usually see a bigger difference. So it's only seven miles less. So 341 is kind of our goal. It's a beautiful day today. It's about 70 degrees here in New Jersey. Um, not really gonna need much heat or cooling. Uh, there's very little wind. I just checked the wind app. There's only like four mile an hour wind coming from the west. So wind shouldn't be a consideration. We drive in loops to negate any uh, change in elevation, which there really isn't much on the New Jersey Turnpike. It's relatively flat. So that's why we picked that to do our highway range tests here in New Jersey. We set the car to chill mode. The tires have been set to manufacturer spec. I'm also going to uh, check the speed when I get onto the turnpike against GPS because sometimes the speedometers are off by a little bit. So we'll check that to GPS and set our actual speed at a true 70 miles an hour. So let's hop out onto the turnpike now and start this range test. I'm going to check back in when the vehicle is 75% charged. Then we'll do one at 50%, 25%, and then the wrap up when we finish. But don't forget, please, Click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All right, so we're out on the New Jersey Turnpike. We've begun our 70 mile an hour highway range test on a 2021 Tesla Model S Plaid with the 21 inch arachnid wheels. I mentioned earlier, it's important to note because if this had the regular 19 inch wheels that are standard, it's EPA range rating is something like 50 more miles. So these 21 inch wheels and really super aggressive tires make a big difference in the range. A couple of things to note, as I said earlier, it's probably a perfect day for the range test. It's like 74 degrees now, very little wind, really good range weather. I did check the speedometer and uh, very typical, it's off by a little bit. I check it with GPS. I have a couple GPS apps that I check this actual speed with. And when the Model S was locked in at 70 miles an hour speedometer, we were only going 69. So I have the autopilot now set at 71 miles an hour, which is a true 70 miles an hour. I'm gonna check back in when we are at 75% state of charge. That's a quarter of the way in. But a couple of comments I wanna make now. This is the second time that I've driven a uh, Model S with the new steering yoke. I've logged maybe two or 300 miles so far. By the end of this range test, I'll have logged hopefully over 500 miles, 600 miles, somewhere around there. And I'm getting used to it, but I still don't like it. I, I don't see that it's an improvement. I, I will, you will get used to it, but um, I'm still not convinced that it's better than a round steering wheel. Uh, the only thing I can say is you get a, a less obstructed view of the driver's display, which is true. That's completely clear for you to see, but I don't ever remember having a problem viewing the driver's display on any of my other vehicles that have round steering wheels. So I don't know if this is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. It's really cool, it looks cool. So maybe you could say, hey, that's why. I mean, you get into it, it looks like you're getting into a, an airplane, not a car. Uh, so it looks cool. And I suppose you will get used to it. I've seen some of the YouTubers that have this say that they actually like it better after a while. And I guess I have to take their word for it. It still seems very awkward to me when I make big turns or um, K turns and so forth. So, you know, it remains to be seen if I would actually think it's better. At this point, at best, I think it's a push to a round wheel. So I, if that's the case, 
I'd rather have a round steering wheel, but um, hey, this is what Tesla did on, on this vehicle, and maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe after a while, I'll say, hey, I changed my mind, and this thing's so cool, and I like it. But for now, I think at best, it'll be equal to a round wheel, but let's see. So let's continue down here on the New Jersey Turnpike. As I said, I'll check back in when we're a quarter of the way. The early uh, results, I'm looking at my consumption, say that we're somewhere around 315 watt hour per mile. If that holds true, we should end up with just a little over 300 miles at the end. And as I said, this is EPA range rated at 348 miles per charge and the highway EPA range rating is 341. So we always hope to get close to the highway EPA range rating. However, Tesla vehicles have proven that they don't. Uh, they underperform in the real world test uh, as compared to their EPA range rating. While most other electric vehicles either tie their EPA range rating when we do these tests, their highway EPA range rating, or they exceed them. Many electric vehicles do better than the EPA range rating. That's not the case with Teslas. They always underperform, and it's because Tesla calculates the EPA range rating differently than most other automakers. They're allowed to do that. The EPA gives them two choices of the way you can calculate your EPA estimated range. Tesla does a more complex method that generally gives better results. Well, better meaning longer results, not necessarily better meaning closer to what you'll get in the real world. We've done deep dives on this on Inside EVs. Take a look. You can look up. We've done a lot of uh, posts on Tesla range compared to EPA. Uh, so I don't expect to hit the EPA highway range of 341. I hope to get close to it, but let's see. We'll check back in at 75% state of charge. All right. So we are at 75% state of charge, meaning we're 25% of the way into this range test. And we drove exactly 75 miles. And we have a consumption rating of 317 watt hour per mile. If this holds true, we'll come in right at 300 miles, which as I mentioned earlier, it would be a little disappointing because the highway range rating is 341. Uh, when I did my 2021 Tesla Model 3 70 mile an hour highway range test recently, I ended up with 310. So I think that should be the goal. Let's see if the Model S can beat my Model 3's range rating. There's really no goal, I guess. You know, we, we, we like to play around with that. We don't really try to hit a certain range. We just try to conduct the range test the best that we can and put the results forward. We're not rooting for the car to do well or do bad. Uh, we just want to put it out there and try to do the best range test we can. As we note quite often, there is no perfect range test. Uh, you know, although today's been excellent for me, I've been able to maintain the 70 miles an hour the whole time. Typically, uh, there'll be a little bit of traffic. I might slow down to 68, 69, 67 miles an hour. And then for a couple of miles, I'll go 71, 72, 73 miles an hour to try to make up for it. But today, there's traffic's been very light. I haven't had to touch the accelerator or brakes at all, except um, to do a loop to turn around, which we do when we get to a certain point. I'll turn around, make a loop, go back up and down the, the turnpike. So. Uh, to try to offset any wind or elevation change. But other than that, it's been perfect sailing today. Check back at 50%. All right, we're at the 50% state of charge point. We're halfway home. And we hit that point at the 145 mile driven point. So we lost a little bit of range. I was expecting to pull in at about 150 miles because we did 75 miles in the first 25% of the drive. So a uh, little bit less now. If you extrapolate out, that's 290 miles that we'd finish with. But, um, you know, when we do these range tests, sometimes we get different results on different legs. The interesting thing is we're actually a little more efficient in this leg because we finished up with uh, 316 watt hour per mile. Whereas if at the 25% uh, point, we were at 317 watt hour per mile. And I know that's really a small difference, but nonetheless, it was a little bit more efficient in that leg, yet we delivered less results. So uh, 
we'll check back in once we've, uh, when we're at the 25% state of charge point, meaning we've completed 75% of the journey. The only other thing I want to mention, I'm not sure if I mentioned this yet, is that we do have the uh, HVAC system on today, as we always do when we do these range tests, but today is such a nice day. It's been between 70 and now it just hit 80 degrees that uh, it's gotten a little too warm. In the beginning, I didn't have any climate control on at all, but now I have the air conditioning on. I have it set to 69 degrees and on fan setting one. So it's a minimal amount of energy being used, but uh, it was getting a little warm in here, so I had to turn that on. But you know, that's perfect range weather. I mean, we're, we're between 73 and now 80 degrees uh, with very little wind. That's great. This is really gonna be representative of what you should be able to get in like perfect conditions in the Model S Plaid with the 21 inch arachnid wheels. Check back in at 25%. All right, 25% state of charge. We're three quarters of the way through the 70 mile an hour highway range test. And we had a good leg. We went 78 miles, the furthest we've gone on any of the first three quarters of the trip. We finished up with 223 miles driven at the 25% state of charge point. And I also noticed that the, our energy consumption dropped down to 308 watt hour per mile. Very unusual because for the whole first half of the trip, we were pretty much holding steady at like 316, 317 watt hour per mile. And then during this whole leg, it just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. So I pulled out my wind app and I did notice that there was about a seven or eight mile an hour tailwind. So that's how big of a difference that wind can make uh, on a long trip. You know, if you have a headwind versus a tailwind, it could be 15, 20, 25 miles of range different, depending on how strong the wind is, it can be even more. But even a mild wind like this, like seven, eight, nine miles per hour, is making a big difference on the range. So now we're back on course to finish up with 300 plus miles. Let's see what happens for the rest of the trip. But here we are at 25% state of charge. We've driven 223 miles and we're forging on forward to the Tesla supercharger at the end of the trip. We'll check back when we're done. Well, we made it. I'm here at the Elizabeth, New Jersey Tesla supercharger station, really close to Newark Airport. So you might hear the jets flying overhead. I can't control that. We finished up with exactly 300 miles. So in that last leg, we were able to drive 77 miles. The state of charge hit zero about two miles before that, right at around 75 driven miles. But there's always something left in the battery. And in this case, I had about two more miles to go on the turnpike to get off to get here. So that's how we finished it up. Now I'm sure I could drive around the parking lot and add four or five more miles onto it if I needed to, but that wouldn't be at 70 miles an hour. So we're gonna call this at an even 300 miles from 100% charge down to zero. So in the four legs, we did 75 miles, 70 miles, 78 miles, and then 77 miles. So relatively consistent. You can figure on somewhere around 75 miles for every 25% of your battery if you're driving at 70 miles an hour. As I've said earlier though, this was great range conditions. If it was colder, if it was windier, if uh, I was driving faster, we wouldn't have been able to get the 300 miles. So this is about as good as it gets at 70 miles an hour. Uh, the temperature was really great today, between 70 and 80 degrees, not a lot of wind, uh, you know, four or five miles an hour, then it got up to seven, eight miles an hour, which that's not perfect, but hey, we don't live in a perfect world. We don't do these range tests on a track in perfectly controlled conditions. That's what the EPA is for. And speaking of which, so we fell 41 miles shy of this vehicle's EPA highway range rating. And you know, that's been pretty consistent with us when we do our Tesla testing. Uh, but you know what, the cars are still amazing, even if they don't hit their EPA range rating. This thing's got 1,020 horsepower. It is 
insanely fast. I had a chance to drive it a while yesterday before I did this range test, and it literally drains the blood out of your head when you do consistent acceleration runs. I got dizzy after a couple zero to 60 runs. So it's amazing that it can be that fast and still pretty efficient. We averaged 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. We finished up with uh, an efficiency rating of uh, 303 watt hours per mile. That's 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which is fantastic for such a brutally powerful, fast electric car with the worst wheels we could have on them for range. This is the lowest range rated Model S you can get. And it can still do 300 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. To me, that that's just mind boggling to get that kind of performance and that kind of efficiency out of the same car. Well, anyway, that's it for our 70 mile an hour highway range rating. And on cue, there's a jumbo jet flying overhead. Don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.